as we conclude our series on Armor Up. This lesson is going to be looking at the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, and also how we bathe all of this in prayer. Enjoy. The final piece of armor is the sword of the Spirit. Now, be sure to know that these are not listed in any certain importance, uh, but they're just listed as the metaphors that are here uh, that, that help us all to, to realize how well-equipped we are. And this is the one probably a lot of us are most familiar with, the sword of the Spirit, which is, he says in verse 17, the Word of God. And I can't stress the importance of being in the Word of God on a regular basis. Uh, a dear friend of mine, if you've watched our live stream, then you're fully aware of Larry Bowles, of who he is. And he often says that we don't read the Bible, the Bible reads us. It's a supernatural phenomenon that happens through God's Word and, and, and how He uses this inspired Word. It's something we choose to do in a physical existence that in, invites and unleashes the power of God working and the truth of God working in our life. Consider these verses from, from Psalms. Your Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have hidden your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it day and night. Hebrews 4, the word of God, it's living, it's active, it's able to divide even to the deepest parts, my thoughts and my emotions and my bones and my marrow, even to the deepest parts of me physically. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 is still true. For all Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for teaching and correcting and training and rebuking in righteousness. Why? So that the person of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. It equips us for battle. If Jesus used it whenever he was attacked by the enemy, then we, what makes us think we shouldn't use it? But we've got to know and put the Word of God in regularly. I encourage you, if if, if putting God's Word in on a regular basis, like a daily basis, is not in your repertoire of, of what you do every day to grow spiritually, it needs to be. Start there. But I don't know where to start. Psalm 1. Just read it. Just start reading it. In fact, I encourage people uh, to, to download a Bible app that has a reading plan and go to a Psalms reading plan and, and just in one month read all of Psalms. It will change you. Start reading John. Start reading Matthew. What, I just don't understand all of it. That's okay. It understands you. Put God's Word in. And, when, and you'll be surprised that whenever the day of evil comes, as we talked about in a previous lesson, the Word of God will come to your mind ready to be used. And you will come up with things and you will do things like, how did that happen? Because you have been putting the Word of God in. The challenge of this text is to use the sword of the Spirit well as you fight your spiritual battle. I want to say one final thing. And, and this is, and we say six pieces of armor. And this is armor, but it's an offensive thing. It's not necessarily, it's, it's out of the metaphor. Um, but it's to pray in the Spirit on all occasions, he says in verse 18. You know, and it's, you get the idea here that, that in these six pieces of armor, and these six principles of spiritual warfare that we've been looking at and discussing. And then he comes in and says, pray in the Spirit on all occasions. That over each aspect of the battle, over each piece of armor, that we're bathing it, immersing it in prayer. Listen to what he says. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep praying for all the saints. Notice the ask from the text, pray in the Spirit. This harkens back to Romans chapter 8, whereas when we don't know what to pray for, or we can't put into words what to pray for, or we can't discern something, that we trust that the Holy Spirit in us knows the will of God, who is God in us, 
can interpret what our minds can understand and our lips cannot form. So praying in the Spirit, and we pray that Spirit just interpret to the throne of God what it is that needs to be said. When? On all occasions. With what? All kinds of prayers and requests. Pray for people. Pray over people. Pray with people. Uh, Pray for healing. Pray for deliverance. Pray for strength. Pray for overcoming. Well, we shouldn't pray for that. I don't know if there's a prayer you should be praying. You shouldn't be praying. Pray. And, and, and let the Holy Spirit work out the rest of that. Don't worry about all the ins and outs of that. But the final thing he says here, be alert and always keep praying for all the saints everywhere. When we pray, we're asking heaven to touch earth in some supernatural way. That we may not understand what's happening or how it's going to happen. If we try to address a spiritual problem in a physical way, we're not addressing the core problem. I'm going to say that again because that's how I want us to to land all of these lessons in, in this section. If we address, if we try to address a spiritual problem in a physical way, we are not addressing the core of the problem. This is a spiritual battle. It is fought in a spiritual realm. It is fought with spiritual weapons of armor that we have been given. And prayer is our entry into it. As Jesus said, when we come out in the battle, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that's what it is to fight this spiritual battle armored up in his mighty power. 